there's this meme that I can't stop laughing about. Very. Uh, yes, it's people screaming and disappearing. Ah! And I really, really want my Twitch chat to be able to trigger something like that on my live stream. So let's figure it out together. Of course, our broadcasting software is going to be OBS Studio. We're also going to be using StreamerBot in order to trigger via channel points or bits or whatever you want. I am going to be using a specific filter that I talked about previously. It's the Freeze Filter by Exeldro. And this video is sponsored by Shadow People. <laughs> Let's get right into it. Okay, so the first thing I did is download a sound effect with the screaming and also the reverb. But as you can see here, I added some form of build up to it so that you can hear it coming so you can pose for it. So of course, we're gonna open up OBS Studio and StreamerBot, make sure everything is connected. If you don't know how to use StreamerBot or anything or OBS Studio for that matter, I check out the links in the description. And this is gonna be super easy. I am going to create a brand new scene. I'm gonna click on plus. I'm gonna call it Ah uh, Echo. Press enter and we're gonna start by importing our sound. Click plus and go find media source. Gonna call it ah echo sound, click okay, click browse and go find it. And yes, I will make this specific one that I made available to you for free, link in the description. Nice, that's pretty much it, click okay. And you can see it's playing in OBS right now even though we can't hear it. We're gonna start by lowering it, first of all. But then we're gonna click on the little hamburger menu here. We're gonna click on advanced audio properties and we're gonna set it so that we can hear it when it happens, not just the stream. So we can see it right there. It says ah, echo sound. We wanna go to monitor only mute output. That means that it's gonna be, get picked up by the desktop audio, but OBS won't recognize it directly from here. Anyways, you're gonna hear it and your chat will hear it if you have your desktop audio on basically. Okay, so far so good. Now, the second thing that we actually need is a screenshot of our camera. Now I have my camera on its specific scene called main cam right there, hi. <laughs> And my camera source is right there called ZV-1 because I'm using a Sony ZV-1. So whatever your camera source is, you wanna go to that source, right click and you will find screenshot source. This will save your screenshot wherever your video output folder is. And if you don't know where your video output folder is, you can go to settings, go to output, and then you'll see recording and recording path right there. I don't remember if there was like a way to specify that you want screenshots in a different folder, but to me, it's there too. So right click and then screenshot. The thing is, you don't want to be in frame when that happens. So I'm gonna do this. <laughs> I'm gonna get under the desk and I'm just gonna click with my mouse. Uh. Obviously it immediately started focusing on the background, but that's fine. I think we can work with that. It created the picture, which is in my folder right there. And I can click open and see what it looks like. There it is, just a picture of me not being there. And now, of course, we're gonna add that to OBS. We're gonna go back to our scene, ah, echo. First of all, we're gonna turn off the sound so it doesn't play every single time we switch to that scene. I'm gonna click on the plus to add a image because we just created an image. Call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call it background empty. Click okay, click browse. And again, I just told you exactly where it was. Good luck. Okay, so far so good. Now there's one thing we want with this image is that when it activates, it actually fades in. So it doesn't cut like that, it fades in. And for that, we can right click, go to show transition, and then we can choose fade. If you don't have fade there, what you can do is go to scene transitions and basically add a new transition. That's gonna be a fade transition, but you, you should have it. Anyways, let me make sure I have that. Yes, show transition, fade, and then you can pick the amount of time it takes to fade in. I'm gonna put one second, which is 1000 milliseconds, and I believe we're good. So if I hide it, it's gonna cut to black and then it's gonna fade in. Nice. Now here's the thing. Let me go to my camera scene. The thing is, <laughs> You can already see how it like transitions into each other. The thing now is that when you go, ah, you would like for the camera to freeze and then the other thing fades in or you fade out. So this is the freeze filter by Exeldro on obsproject.com. There will be a link in the description and you can see Andy also made a tutorial on it. So go watch that and you can download it right there. Depending on your operating system, you click on download one of those. I actually haven't tested it yet. <laughs> so I'm gonna pick my camera source here. I'm gonna go to filters and then I'm gonna click plus. Actually, I can delete this. Look at that color grading. Once upon a time, we had color grading for free. Remember those days? Face tracker. Oh, it works again. Nice. Anyways, click plus and we want to add a freeze. There it is, it froze. Okay, that's pretty cool. There's so much that I don't know about. I haven't watched Indy's video yet. <laughs> All I know that if we turn this on, it's going to free freeze. Nice. 
perfect. Now that we know the order of action, we can go to StreamerBot and start setting up our actions. In StreamerBot, I'm gonna go here. I am in my actions tab. I'm gonna right click in the middle of nowhere, click add and call this one a uh, echo. I'm gonna put it in my others group. I'm gonna click okay. All right, what do we want to happen first? Of course, we want to play the sound. So I'm gonna right click go to OBS, we're gonna go to sources, and then we're gonna set source visibility state. Nice, where was that source? Which scene was it in? It was in our ah echo scene, or is it ah echo right there, cool. What is the source? We want it to be the ah echo sound, okay? For the state, we want it to be visible, basically turn on that sound. When that happens, we want it to wait until it gets to the ah, right? Let me go to Premiere and basically figure out exactly where it's supposed to do that. Okay, according to my timeline in Premiere, it's at three seconds and 18 milliseconds. So I'm gonna right click, go on core, click on delay, and we're gonna set it to 1,800 milliseconds. Wait, why, why am I putting one? <laughs> 3,800 milliseconds, is that what it is? 3,000 man 3180 milliseconds all right and at this moment that's where we get to the ah <laughs> we want to freeze the frame on our camera so i'm going to right click go to obs we're gonna go to source and we're gonna find set source filter state to say hey we want you to turn on a filter in my case my camera is in its own scene which is called main cam and then the source is going to be zv1 and the filter is going to be freeze uh -huh. Yeah, here comes the man in black. Only boomers will get that reference, I guess. <laughs> so now it froze. But what else do we want to happen? We also want our background image to fade in, right? To be activated, basically. So right click OBS, sources, source visibility state. Then we're gonna go to our scene, which is the ah echo. The source in this case is going to be the background empty and we're gonna set it to visible. Okay, so technically this will activate our effect. Now we just wanted to wait until the whole sound is done and basically turn everything off so that it's ready for the next time. So we need to figure out between that point and the end, how much time do we have? And Premiere is telling us that it's four seconds and 26 milliseconds or 260 milliseconds, I guess. So we need another delay. So you can right click core delay for 4,260, four, 4, click okay. If you have multiple repetitive sub actions like that, you don't have to always right click and go find them. You can just duplicate the ones that you already have. For example, this is the source visibility state for my background. I want the background to disappear. I can right click on here and click duplicate sub action. It's automatically gonna put it at the bottom. All I have to do now is double click and set it to hidden because that's what I wanted to do. Nice, let's do the same thing. Oh, the webcam was frozen for all that time. Let's unfreeze it maybe. Right click, duplicate it, double click and set that freeze visibility filter basically to hidden. So it's gonna stop being frozen. We don't have to copy any delay anymore. We just want everything to basically shut down. So that's the sound. That's the first thing we added. We're gonna right click, duplicate it, double click on the new one and set it to hidden. So quick recap, play the sound, wait for me to basically figure out that the sound is playing so I can pose, freeze my camera and immediately fade in my background. So it looks like I'm disappearing. Wait like that for four seconds and then hide the background, the camera, and turn off the sound. Just for good measure, I'm going to take the camera and I'm gonna put it up top. I don't think there's any delay in between all three of those, but just in case I don't want it to hide the background and then my camera is still frozen. We'll see, we'll see if that works. If not, we can just add a little bit of delay. Now, usually what I would do is go and add that scene as a source in my other scenes, right? I would go to my full screen, I would go to my gameplay, but what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna add it to my camera scene. So I have my camera on its own scene. That way, wherever my camera already is, the effect will be visible. The reason why we're doing that is because we have multiple scenes where the camera might be different. This is my just chatting scene. This is my gameplay scene. If I just added the ah echo source, it would fill the screen, right? This is my VR scene. Same thing. Uh, I would just have a big background show up in the middle. It wouldn't make sense. So my nested camera scene, I'm gonna click plus. I'm gonna go find well, the scene, <laughs> I'm gonna click on our echo and I'm gonna add it. So right now everything is already turned on. So what I'm gonna do is go back 
make sure that the background is also turned off. And now we can link this action to a channel point reward. I'm gonna go to platform. Mine is already connected to Twitch. Channel point rewards. You can see I have a, oh my God, I have so much. Right click, click add. And I'm gonna call this one disappear. If I call it ah echo, it wouldn't be self-explanatory. Is that how you write disappear? Disappear. Never mind, there's two P. For the cost, you can put whatever you want. I'm gonna put 1000. And for the prompt, I'm gonna put make that boy disappear. Here you have uh, the cooldown, which I'm gonna put to 120 seconds, so two minutes. And finally, I'm gonna select the action that I wanted to execute, which is the ah echo. Let's click OK. And it should have created a channel point reward. Boom. A lot of people have been asking me, how do I get my chat here? Or how, how do I get the activity feed? I'm using OBS live from stream elements. So you can just look up OBS live or you can look up your docs and play around with it. Basically custom browser docs. You can just find the link to your Twitch chat and then you can dock it somewhere. Anywho, click on channel points and we're going to see this appear right there. Okay. So let's say that I am in my just chatting scene and we're chilling. I'm talking to chat. Hi, how are you doing? We're streaming and someone goes and redeems the disappear channel point reward. And I'm going to hear the Why couldn't I hear it? Two hours. Okay, I was so confused for so long. And then I realized that I messed up, okay? Instead of putting source filter state, I should have put source visibility state because obviously like I'm trying to make the sound basically visible. I didn't even realize that I did that. <laughs> so that was kind of weird. Uh, let's go ahead and delete that one. I'm gonna press delete on my keyboard. Nice, and we're also gonna delete the source filter state here because, well, I just duplicated it, right? Now I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna go to OBS. I'm gonna go to sources and of course, source visibility state. And in that case, the scene is ah uh, echo. Ah uh, echo sound is the source. And then we're gonna make it visible. Of course, it appears at the bottom. I'm gonna put it up top. Then I'm gonna duplicate it. Nice, so it duplicates at the bottom. Double click and make it hidden. That makes sense. We can even test it. You can double click here and then click test for the visible part. And we can see it turning on. All right, let's make sure to turn it off. <sighs> I can never do it in one take. It's it's weird. There's always some issues. Let's test it one more time. So we're here. We're talking to Chad. Hi, guys. How you doing? Welcome to my stream. I'm super happy to have you here. And then someone goes and redeems the disappear channel point reward. You're going to hear the thing coming up. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And apparently everything just disappears at the right time. So like my camera is not frozen when we come back. Let me redeem it once again, just for good measure. I want to take a good look at it. Twitch, you should make it so that the streamer doesn't have a cooldown when redeeming their own stuff. That way we can test our stuff if it's working. Let's do it again. So if you time it right, you can maybe do the ah. <laughs> you have to do it in advance though. You have to, you have to really plan it. <laughs> Definitely something to play with. <laughs> Well, apart from my little error, that's going to be a pain to actually edit. I can say that it went pretty smoothly. We only have eight sub actions and two of them are delays. So it's just six proper sub actions. That's a pretty easy effect to do. Let me test it on my gameplay scene, for example. So you're playing the game. <laughs> Now here's an extra tip, final tip. If you have different lighting or let's say like you stream during the day and then there's sunlight coming in and sometimes you stream during the night, you are going to have, well, if you want it to be realistic, basically, you would want to basically take a screenshot right before the stream, right? So the process of taking the screenshot outside of the frame, you would do that. And of course you would go back to your scene here and you would just double click and click browse and find the new screenshot basically. That being said though, if you watch my album cover tutorial, you'll realize that there's a process with StreamerBot where you can automate that probably with a keyboard shortcut. And if you do it with StreamerBot, you can even set a delay so that you can press the button and then hide and then it would take the screenshot automatically and it will replace it for you also automatically. Anyways, the hint is go watch my other videos. Check out the links in the description and follow me on Twitch. Go out there. Make me proud, Gale Level. Out.